title for this will be Grace Part 16. <laughs> Grace Part 16. That's a long time. Most people's I've, I've noticed most people's sermons is either part one or part two or one, two, three. That's about it. I'm getting up to 16 and probably got about 40 to go. But it's very, very important. Because we're talking about the very substance of the kingdom which we now live in. Kingdom of grace. As Patty said, I would not have you ignorant. So we, we go through it. I, I hope you're learning. And you know, it's not just you learning. I learn too. So it's... Uh, but I'm going to back up a little bit and to go back to Ezekiel 43 and 10. Seems like this was a couple Sundays ago, but I just felt like we, we need to go back just a little bit. Just, just one verse right there. Then we're going to go to Colossians and then Revelation and then Corinthians and then John. Colossians, 2 Corinthians, Revelation, Genesis, back to Galatians. We've got to have a board up here to put all that stuff on. Ezekiel 43.10 Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. <clears throat> let them measure the pattern. Measure the pattern. Measure the sum. Show, show the full measure of the house to the house. Now, you recall Paul would say this gospel was given to me. How was it given to him? How was it given to John? I'm not talking John the Baptist. I'm talking John as they sing the song, John the Revelator, the gospel of John, the epistles of John. It was given by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, think about this verse. Why, for whom was it given? It was given for the house or for the church. Show the house to the house. Now, show them what? Show them the full measure of their salvation. Now, I want you to think about that. Holding nothing back. I want you to... He says, Ezekiel, come up here, measure the house, or you know, I'm going to measure this house, and I want you to go show the house to the house. The full measure in every detail. Now, let's go to Colossians. I don't know, this may seem a little rhetorical, but Feel the, feel the need for this. Colossians 1.24 Who now rejoice in my sufferings. Man, alive. We, this, this sounds like Wednesday night here, doesn't it? Who rejoice in my sufferings. How many Christians rejoice in their sufferings? Anybody on Facebook knows that's a lie. <laughs> huh? Oh, pray for me. Pray for me. I got to hang you. Oh, Lord, get, her, get, her, get the elders. I want us to get to that point, guys, where these things don't move us. I, I mean, I mean that with all my heart. Because these things will come upon you. And that's not our message. That's for Wednesday night message. But I want us to get to where these things don't move us. Where am I? I'm a minister. Or right, let me go back. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which was behind of me at the afflictions of Christ in my flesh. Why? For his body's sake. Now look at this next verse. Which is the church? Do you realize Jesus Christ has a body? And you are it. I don't know if that sinks in very much sometimes, but 
You are the very body. He doesn't have two or three bodies, guys. He's got one. That's his church. Whose body you are. And Paul says, where have I made a minister? Who's he ministering to? He's ministering to that body. You know, I just, I, I think about, about these things. Ministering to the body. My gosh. And we minister to the body. You know what we're doing, guys? We are ministering to the Lord. When we minister one to another, do you realize you are ministering to the Lord? Why? Because you're His body, and the head and body is one. Remember what He said, when you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. According to the, where have I made a minister, uh, a minister according to the dispensation of God, or let's say it this way, the administration. What does administration sound like? That's government. So what are we talking about? He has delivered us from the power of darkness, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So this word dispensation is really the word administration. We're talking about a brand new government here. And what are you in this new government in this new kingdom ministers to the body and guys we're all called to be ministers so we minister one to another which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God let me just go and read this even the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his, of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Jesus Christ. Now, does this sound like a grace message? Paul says the reason we're doing this and teaching and warning every man is that we may present every man perfect in Jesus Christ. Does this sound like just as I am, come as you are? Well, that's the beginning. But God help us if we stay there. If we just, just as I am, and we come in that condition and we stay there, that's like a kid going to school, being 35 still in the first grade. You know, the first couple of years it's okay, but when he's 14 and in the first grade, something's wrong. When he's 35 and in the first grade, something ain't right. And Oakley, I was 12 when I got out of the first grade. <laughs> if y'all want to know what the comedic Jesus looks like, y'all need to hang out with Oakley. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. But this word here, guys, this word is to you. Show the house to the house. It's for you, the church, to declare. Look what he says. Given to me, Paul said this, it's given to me, I'm in verse 25, to fulfill the word of God. To fulfill. In other words, to declare the word of God in its fullness. To declare to you the word of God in its absolute fulfillment leaving nothing out. Even the mystery which is revealed, we're at in the face and person of Christ who lives in you. I'm come to declare to you the word fully holding nothing back. <coughs> Why do you think we're on grace 16? Because I'm not going to hold nothing back. Now, let me just give you a couple of verses over here. Now let's go to the book of Revelation. <clears throat> Notice the book of Revelation. Only one revelation. That's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Right here at the end of the book, Revelation 22, 19. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy. Now let me say it this way. If any man shall hold back from the from the book of this prophecy, you want to know who our, you, you know what prophecy is? It's the testimony of Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy. Not of things, but of the person himself. If anybody holds back 
God shall take away his part out of the book of life. Which, that's Christ again. That's Christ. You know, I just throw this little thing out at you. And I, I was wondering sometimes, the Lord will present questions to me and lay something out there. I was kind of looking at this book of life and, and we used to go through this thing all the time. And I used to think God had this great big old book up there with a bunch of names in it, in and out, in and out. And it was all sealed up, you know. And, you know, literally, I'm, I'm just talking literally. And, you know, we always said, well, he wrote this book r way early, before anybody was here. And then, you know, as you, you know, like when you look at the book, it was 3500 B.C. And, you know, we'd go through it and he would have a list of names. You know, then we'd get up to 1967 and he would say, oh, yeah, Jim Moore. Yeah, right there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's start blessing him. You know, going down through the book, you know, like Oakley. Oh, Lord. Get there, Gabriel, give me that eraser. <laughs> and I kind of looked at things literally like that. Or, you know, it's like you you come before the throne one of these days and, and, and you know, God's going to say, uh, uh, what's your name again? Let's see if you're in here. Let's see. Uh, how do you spell that last name? You know, wait a minute. All right, let me get over here to the G's. You know? I thought that's pretty. That's pretty dumb. You know, God asked me one time in my heart, "Do you really think I don't know? Do I need a book?" I thought, "Huh." Well, I just got that my theory out the window. Let me tell you, the book of life is His Son, Jesus Christ. Okay. The volume of the book is written of him. It says, if anybody holds back, God shall take his part out of that book and out of the holy city and from the things which are written therein. He which testifies these things says, surely I come. Listen to that word. Listen to that word. I may come. If y'all do this, I may come. He says, surely I come and quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. This is the last verse in the Bible. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Holding nothing back. Ezekiel, show the house to the house. Show Christ in his full measure. Christ is the full measure. And you know what he's looking for, guys? Now, let me, let me say this. And I, I'm trying to think of a way here, maybe. I'm not here to try to excite you, but yet at the same time it's exciting. Okay, there's some places you can go that's all about trying to get you pumped up and excited. But this in itself will get you pumped up and excited. There's a difference, and the Lord knows what's in your heart, and He's looking for hearts turned to see Him, not what you can get out of the deal. Are you going to get something out of the deal? Yeah, you're going to get Christ in full measure out of the deal, but... He wants a heart that is turned just to see Him. Whether you get something or whether you don't. You see what I mean? A lot of people's in it for what can you do for me. But Paul was in it for it don't matter. I just want to see Him. I'm pressing on to the mark of the prize of the high calling. It don't matter if I get whipped, beat, shipwrecked, thrown in jail. I'm here to learn Christ. I just want to see Him and the power of His resurrection be made conformable into his death. That I may know him. I said, I don't care about nothing else. That I may know him. He's looking for hearts that have that. That, I, that may know him. And a heart that is turned to, to look in the face of his son. You know what the scripture says? No man 
has seen God or look upon him and live. Now you've got to understand, guys, this, this, will, this, this will be what happens when you really see Jesus. When I'm talking about living, you'd be just like the elders in the, in the scriptures when they saw the Lamb. They all fell upon their faces and they cast their crowns at His feet and they said, Holy, holy, holy is He, worthy is He. I'm not talking dead like you put them in a casket, guys. But you come to that place where it's no longer I, but Christ that lives. A heart that is turned to look in the face of a son. Now let me say this. God's only view is of his son. God's only concern is of his son. With you and me, it's, it may be about grace. With the Father, it's all about the Son. And you say, well, wait a minute, you just left me out. Herein is the grace of God, guys. Where is Christ? Christ in you, the hope of glory. You're His very body. Let's go read some scriptures over here in Corinthians. I'm going to start in chapter 1. Verse 9. I was looking at this and I started reading and I got the first three words out of this verse last night. I just had to stop there. I thought, my word. I wonder, I wonder if people... God is faith. Just let that sink in there for just a little bit. God is faithful. Oh my gosh. I wish that you know I've, I've, I've known a lot of people I'm sure you guys have too. A lot of people, some of the people are faithful some of the times and some of them are faithful more than others. But you want to know who really is faithful, guys. God is faithful. <clears throat> By whom you were called into the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. Now see, there's a call that went out in the scriptures you can read where Jesus said there was a supper made, a wedding made. <laughs> And he said, go call all of them. And everyone that he called, they said, well, you know, I got to go see some land. I got some cows I got to go take care of. And I got to go. Then he says, go out to the highways and the byways. Invite them all to come. Get the halt, the lane. You know who that is? That's me and you. And he says, those that were first invited, they won't need to this. You want to know what he was talking about, guys, was the natural Jews down there and the Gentiles that it was going to be brought in because he stood there over them and wept over them. And I've said it many times, but I'll just say it again. I would as a hen to gather a brood, but, and you would not. Therefore, your house is left desolate. Paul is writing to the Corinthians, a bunch of Gentiles here, and he says, God is faithful. And it's by him you were called into the fellowship of your son, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now remember what we just read about? He's, or, I told you God's only concern is for his son. God's only view is for his son. And you're called into that fellowship. Now Paul says, now I beseech you, now I beg you. Brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak the same thing. Oh, my God. What is he talking about here? That we get a what we believe statement? And, and we all got to believe the same thing? No, what's he saying that we speak the same thing? There's only one thing to speak. <coughs> we'll just keep on reading. And that there be no divisions among you. Lord, Lord, help us. There is enough denominations in Tazewell County alone to set up a brand new church in every major city in the world. 
be no divisions among you. But see, we go back to this. Not we got to speak the same thing. Well, I believe baptism ought to be this. Well, I believe baptism. I believe it ought to be the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe it ought to be this. I believe we ought to. You know, have bread and wine every week. I believe it's just grape juice. I believe you got to wear a long dress. I believe you got to wear black pants. I believe this, and I believe this, and I believe this. Paul says, I'm begging you, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak the same thing. And there be no divisions among you, but <coughs> that you be perfectly joined together. We just went, went over there and read that in Colossians about being perfect. Now how is this going to take place? Only by growing up into Him. That we not stay in the first grade all the time. Because what happens in the first grade? we got a whole bunch of daggone first grade teachers. That you be perfectly joined together. How? In the same mind and same judgment. What is that mind? What did he say? Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, not that we're going to be equal with God, but what he said, not something to be held on to. But he goes on to say that he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Let this mind be in you. And in the same judgment, what same judgment? If one died for all, then all died. Guys, if you can understand that, then you can understand that this ain't about I believe this and you believe this and therefore we can't be together. It's us gathering together, sitting there with our mouth closed, waiting on the revelation of Jesus Christ. That would take away a whole lot of divisions out of the church and a whole lot of signs and belief statements that we could all just gather together and let's start a prayer line and say, let's just wait until he appears. Because he said, I come quickly, even so, amen. Where there's two or three gathered together, there I'll be in the midst. He said, you gather together and wait on me to appear, and that's where I'll appear. But how many are waiting on him to appear today? They don't want him to appear in the church. God forbid if he showed up in the church, I like my position. And I don't want to fall on my face and throw my crown down at his feet. God gave me this. Paul said, I beg you. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. All the way back in when the church started. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I'm of Paul, and I'm of Apollos, and I'm of Cephas, and I'm of Christ. Is Christ divided? 33,000 denominations in the United States alone. I ask you, is Christ divided? We don't do it that way here, brother. That ain't how we roll in this place. Is Christ divided? I bet Paul was begging the church 2,000 years ago. Wonder what he would do today. Think he would make havoc of it and roll some people out of there and <clears throat> still be begging them. Come on, guys. Let this one mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Let this one judgment be in you. If one died for all, all died. Let this crucified mind be in you. Nobody any better than anybody else. My God, the most arrogant people around I know are Christians. Do you realize, God, let me just throw this out there at you. Y'all know that on Sundays, a lot of people leave church service and go out and eat. Have you ever talked to any waitresses? They hate Sundays worst of all. Why is that? Because a bunch of cheapskate Christians out there won't even <laughs> leave a decent tip. Yeah, amen. Amen. That's the truth. Right. It ought not be that way, guys. It ought not be that way. Mm -hmm. My God, God help us. The only thing that's going to change that is the revelation of Jesus Christ down in your heart, guys. That's it. Amen. Seeing Him. <clears throat> and that's all we're here to show the house to the house in full measure. 
Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? You know what Paul is saying? You know how many run around today and say, Oh my God, I brought 47 to the Lord. I've done this. Paul said, Was, was Paul crucified for you? Paul says, Yeah, I may be a minister. Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. At least any of you should say that I baptized in my own name. And I baptize also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. <clears throat> not with wisdom of words. Listen to this. This ought to tell you what the gospel is right here. But he sent me to preach the gospel. <coughs> not with the wisdom of words, least the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You want to know what the gospel is, guys? Well, the gospel's good news. Here is the good news. It's the cross of Jesus Christ. Therein is the good news. Let this mind be. If the cross was really worked into people, you know, the pride and the cross don't go together. The cross destroys pride. Yeah. It destroys it. If the cross is really being preached, you know what you'll do with the crown that's on your head when Jesus is revealed? You'll take that crown off and throw it at his feet. Mm -hmm. And you'll say, my Lord and my God. Paul said, I'm not coming in here with the wisdom of man's word. I don't want to make the cross of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Nobody wants to hear this message about being in afflictions and being in bonds and all this other stuff. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of... What is the power of God? The preaching of the cross. Do you see that, guys? God's, and look right here, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. The only is true instrument by which God determines oneness or union, the true measurement, what does he say over there in John? And of his fullness have we all received. Mm-mm-mm. Let me go back to Colossians. Of his fullness have we all received. Because we started this last week trying to get to the point about that grace is a new state of being. We've been delivered from the power of darkness, translated into the kingdom of his dear son. This ain't a back and forth thing, guys. Well, one day I'm in the kingdom, one day I'm out, you know. He translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. My God, some people want to, they want to think, well, I'm only there and, you know, as soon as I sin, I, I'm kicked back out and all this other stuff because no sin come in and defile. I, I want to tell you, here's the good thing or why I'm going over this grace so much, guys, because this, if this was based on any action of you, every one of you would be disqualified. Because God is faithful. Yeah. You see, not you, because this ain't based on how much you read. God help us. It ain't based on how much you pray. Because I can guarantee you don't read enough, you don't pray enough, you ain't good enough. God is faithful. Yes, hallelujah. God whom, and this is what Paul said, this is why I preached the cross. Let this man be, and this is the power of God. God is faithful. You're not. He knew you wouldn't be. That's why he gave you the gift of his son that we call grace. Amen. Grace, are you saved? Well, how did you get saved? Well, as soon as I got saved, I started doing this. Just receive him. That's it. Just receive him. To as many as received him. 
To them he gave power to become the sons of God. Not to as many as read every day and, and do this and do that and do this. Yeah, you'll do that after you see him because he'll light a fire in you. You'll want to do that. But if you get ten rules and you're going to be saved, then I want you to come to this being saved 101 class and show you all these other things. No, what I'm going to show you when you come to my class is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. This ain't how you ought to act and all that other stuff. Because how you ought to act when you begin to see Him is just throw your crown down. Yes. And say, yes. my Lord and my God. Don't even know how to pray, Ola Gay. Don't even know how to do nothing. The Lord show me. He says, sit right down, right there. <laughs> and I come quickly. Surely I will come. Why? Because God is faithful. Colossians 2.6 As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord How? Built up. Rooted, built up in Him and established in the faith. As ye have been taught abounding therein with what? Thanksgiving. Beware. Now listen. Listen. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men for the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. You know what he's just saying? Everything I just told you not to do. Beware that they will come in, Oakley, and they'll say, well, Oakley, now that you've been saved, now you've got to do this. Now you've got to join this program. Now you've got to go do this. This is our tradition here, guys, and if you don't do it this way, we'll have none of you. Paul says, come on, guys, I hear there's contentions among you. There's divisions among you. Why? Because you got this philosophy, you got this tradition. And this philosophy and this tradition can't get together. So now what? You go start yours and I'll go start mine. But we want a church full of power. And what is that power? It's the cross of Jesus Christ. Beware lest any man <coughs> spoil you. No, verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Listen to this verse. And ye are complete in him. Listen. This is a state of being. You're not going to be complete. You are complete. Why? Because the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in you. You are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. Let me keep on reading. In whom also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. In the putting off of the body of sins, I'm going to go horse. It's a lame putting off the body of sins <coughs> of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism. I'll be, I won't be able to talk here in a minute. I got 45 minutes to go. Don't turn around and look at the clock. Hopefully this might blow it right there. There's about to be division in here. <laughs> Buried with him in baptism, wherein you are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, the uncircumcision of your flesh, have they quickened together with him, having forgiven you most. Holy Ghost said, uh uh. All. Your trespasses. That's sins. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Blotting it. You know what that means? That means just like we had this thing, we took an eraser and we just erased it off the board. Go. Which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Full of principalities and, sp and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over Amen. them. Let no man therefore <coughs> judge you in meat. Somebody's going to have to read for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
most <laughs> spray now. <laughs> Let me hold on. <laughs> Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of a holy day or new moon or Sabbath days. All these things that divide Vain traditions, philosophies, all this. Let no man judge you in any of that stuff. Those things were just a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. <clears throat> Corinthians says, well, let's just read it. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Well, let me ask you, let me, let me go back over this verse. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, let me ask you the question, are you in Christ? I mean, I, I just got to ask you that question because if you are in Christ, there's some consequences to this. I would say in my heart, yes, I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. Then what happens? He is going to be a new creature he already is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are coming new. Now, you may not walk in it. You may not understand it. That's why I'm here, so that you won't be ignorant. That's right. mm -hmm. You know, we say it time and time again. You can have $10 million in the bank, but if you're ignorant of it, you may live in a daggone cave somewhere. Just because you're ignorant of it. It don't mean you don't have it. <coughs> would not have you ignorant of these things. Let me, let me just go over here and read something to you. Revelation 21. Remember this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For well, the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. But guys, what did I just read to you? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. What did it say? All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Guys, don't try to make this naturally. If so, you'll have God up in the sky somewhere and a heaven up in the sky that he had to get rid of. Why? Eh, we, we'll leave that. Notice it's a new heaven, a new earth. And as John saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, it's new. Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared already. <clears throat> As a bride adorned for her husband, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. God is faithful. Remember, God is faithful. Have you heard the great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men? Have you heard that voice? When you begin to hear that voice, my God, behold, old things are passed away and all things are, are new. God himself, not another. I, heard, I hear these people speaking, term, speaking uh, preaching all these sermons on angels and all these other things. It's still saying, I'm going to send my angels to be with you. This says God himself. Yeah. God shall wipe away all tears 
from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. You know why there's no more death? Because life lives in you. Life himself. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. There will be no more death because life, eternal life, lives in to us. To, to the dead who hear my voice. To us many. As they're in the graves, thus you hear my voice. And you'll be given eternal life. That's Christ. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. The former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold. But what is the throne, guys? The throne is the mercy seat between the two cherubims in the tabernacle. What was on the mercy seat? Make sure when you go in there, you don't go in by yourself, but you take blood with yeah, you. Yeah. You know what's on this mercy seat? The blood of Jesus Christ. How did he see the Lamb as it had been slain from the foundation of the world? He's sitting on the throne of mercy on a blood covered seat. On a blood covered seat. And you know what? Have you ever seen a fountain opened up in the house of David? A fountain opened up for sin and uncleanliness. I wonder where it flows from. Measure the house. You remember when he got done measuring the house? And I saw water come out of the threshold. You know what the threshold is? That's coming out from under the throne. What flowed out of Jesus' side was blood and water. The cross, that's what it is, guys. That's where it starts. I make all things new. And he said unto me, right. For these words are true and faithful. He said unto me, it is done. Y'all get that? It is done. I don't know what that means. It's over. Kaput. Finished. It's done. I'm Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. And I will give it to him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of the life freely. Remember Ezekiel measure the house? Right, in, right when he got finished measure, he breaks into the river, and the where did the river start? Out from under the throne. And he says, you don't know who this water's to? Ever who's thirsty? <coughs> I don't care if they're a drug addict. I don't care if they're a drunk. Because when they drink this water, Oh, this water will change them. This is the only water that can change them. Yes. This is the only water that will do anybody any good. You can drink that water and you'll be thirsty again. But he who drinks of me, Amen. that's who this water is for, guys. Paul said, I'm a minister of this. I'm a minister of this grace. Oh, my Lord. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. Come on, guys. This ain't about you. Who overcome? Jesus overcame all things. Yeah. And what did he do? He inherited all things. I heard these verses all the time. The meek shall inherit the earth. Guess who the meekest among men was? Him. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Not sons many, but sons as one. I beseech you, brethren, that there be no divisions among you. Only one son, guys. Many members, but one body. Let me go back to Genesis. I was reading this last night. I said, oh, Lord, never seen this before. Genesis 1.29. And we just read that he will inherit all things. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed. Now, who's he talking to? The volume of the book's written of him. And we want to jump up and say, this is, he's talking to Adam. He was looking for somebody else. He was looking for his son. And he says, I have given you, my son, every herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree, and which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed, to you it shall be from meat. To every beast of the earth, to every fowl of the air, to every thing that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so when God saw everything that he had made. And behold, 
It was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. But now listen to this. I remember we read over there about the Sabbath days and the new moons and all these other things. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. Thus the heavens, plural. Remember, all, remember I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So we're talking about all that that was made in the six days. They were finished and all the host of them. Well then here we got a brand new one. A day never before seen. And on the seventh day, God ended this work. Remember, he said, it's done. Finished. Which he had made. God ended his work which he has made and he rested. In or on the seventh day from all the work which he had made. God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Guys, who is this day? Is Jesus Christ. Christ. The Sabbath ain't a day on a calendar, guys. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the finished work of God. He blessed it. He sanctified it. Because that in He had rested from all His work, which God created and made. Behold, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Give you the last verse. Galatians 2.20 Here in this grace summed up I am crucified with Christ Let me just read these two I am crucified with Christ Nevertheless I live Yet not I but Christ liveth in me for the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, Christ is dead in vain. Grace provided the death. Grace provided the burial. Grace provided the resurrection. Most people say, I'm crucified with Christ. And they stop there. And they stop there. Oh, I'm, I'm going through tough times. I'm going to be crucified. Paul didn't stop there. He says, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ liveth in me. Here is the grace of God, but Christ liveth in me in me. There's the grace of God. Life is not me living. Grace is not me living. Grace and life is Christ living in me. Amen. And the faith of the Son of God, listen to this, is the acknowledgement of that in my daily Life, not my pretty Sunday morning made up go to church face, but in my daily life, when all hell breaks loose and the tires fall off your car, how do you get through by the faith of the Son of God? That's the acknowledgement. I live by the faith of the Son of God because the faith of the Son of God is the acknowledgement of the mystery of God. What is that mystery? <coughs> the mystery is not about Christ. It is Christ. The mystery is that God would live in me because He is in Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, that God Almighty would live in me, not just give me life, as he did in the garden, he's moved in. Christ liveth in me. Grace is a new state of being because the being of grace lives in you. God is faithful. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Okay. 
Look how he says that. Let me just read it again and then I'm done. Behold, he says, look, the tabernacle of God is with men. Not over in Jerusalem. Not in, is with men. And he will dwell with them. They shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. I wish I had the voice to yell and holler and scream because I'm going like that. But I'm going to tell you what, guys. God is faithful. Grace is a new, brand new state of being wherein you live because the being of grace lives in you. Yeah. Do you get that, guys? Just let that sink in. The being, guys, and, and, and oh, Lord, I, I wish, wish I could give sight to the blind. Mm -hmm. I know people that are just in a hell of a mess all the time. <coughs> Christians. Yeah. No. Christians. It'll not be that way. Their whole life is drama. It's a mess. I want to say, you know what? You know why your life is a mess? Because you're drinking the wrong water. You're not drinking the water that comes from the throne. This water's full of blood. What do you mean it's full of blood? It's full of the life of Jesus Christ that was shed abroad on the cross. Amen. Come and drink this water. Yeah. And this water, you'll never thirst again, George. This water, you can't die because it is life itself. And life lives in you. <clears throat> no more tears? What do you mean no more tears? I can't what I'm telling you what, when you get a vision of Him, yes. Lord have mercy. You're talking no more tears. Mm -hmm. You're talking street of gold. Or, I mean, you can, I'm just telling you what, old guy, everything changes then. I know when I began to see, oh, Lord, you get that testimony that Thomas had, and I mean, that was it, my Lord and my God. That was the only two, that was my sermon for a long time, my Lord and my God. I mean, uh, I could just see the Lord standing there saying, look, look, look at this hole in my side. Look at my hands and my feet. Put in your finger. Oh, my God. I could just hear him say, touch me, handle me. See that a spirit hath not flesh and bone as you see me have. My God, he is risen. And he is risen in you. God is faithful. God only sees his son. God's only concern is his son. And guess what? He lives in you. You, this is a mystery the world knows nothing about. They can't even, because he said, show it to the world. No, show the house to the house. All of this is for you. Now, I want to say it's all about the sun. It is all about the sun, the covenants between the sun and it's everything. But where do you get involved? Because he said, God has moved in. Amen. He's given him everything. Every herb bearing seed and tree, and they're all for him. All of it for him. And, what, and God is faithful. And Jesus has moved in. I was, I'm telling you what, guys, we live, we live in a drug infested, drunk infested, lazy infested, every other word you can say. We can pray, 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 we can pray till our tongues fall out. What did he say? Show them. Listen to what I'm telling you. Show the house to the house. He didn't say pray for the house. You can pray for the house, that's good, but your daily life will be how you show them. Your daily life, guys, how you how you Go when you leave here and you go to Wendy's or when you go to wherever. How you act in that place. How you act in your place of business. How you act in all these other places. Let this mind be in you. Let this judgment be in you. What judgment was? God judged the whole world in that cross. And he said, this is my son. None lives but him. No man can come to the Father except by me. 
There's his judgment right there. None is good. No, not one. Live in that judgment. That judgment does away with pride. It does away with arrogance. It does away with awe. Then you got one sermon to go preach. And your sermon will be, come see a man Amen. that told me all I ever did. Just come see him. That's all I got to say. This man just covered you. This man's got some water. And if you're thirsty, just come and drink. Yeah. Come and dine. What did he say? Amen. This is for all that are thirst. If you're thirsty, come and drink. Mm -hmm.